In our last video, we explored a big problem, deforestation. The cutting down of forests that destroys homes, ecosystems and balance in nature. But now the question is, can we undo the damage? Can we protect what's left off? Yes, through conservation. Conservation means carefully using and protecting natural resources like forest, animals and water. So they don't disappear. And one of the most powerful tools for conservation is the protected areas. Let's explore them now. First, we need to understand the playground of all life that is the biosphere. It's a thin outer layer of earth where all living things exist. As in air in the atmosphere, land as in geosphere, water as in hydrosphere and all of these are working together. So biosphere is defined as the region on, above and below the earth's surface where life exists. Inside this biosphere is something precious, that is biodiversity. The enormous variety of life from bacteria in the soil or fungi in the soil to tigers in the forest. Every organisms play a role. Some clean the air, others pollinate the crops, some keep the population balanced by being predators or prey. And if you lose one part of the web, the whole system can wobble. And that's exactly why we protect certain areas. And here is how it all works. First up, we have got wildlife sanctuaries. These are special places where animals can live safely and peacefully. No hunting, no poaching, and definitely no messing with the homes. Right now, India has around 566 wildlife sanctuaries. This map right here shows where all the sanctuaries are across different states in India. Take a moment to pause and check it out if you're curious about how many are there in each state. Next, we have national parks, which are even more protected areas. In these areas, not just animals, plants too are looked after. No farming, no cutting down trees, and basically no human interference, just nature doing its thing. India has a bunch of amazing national parks. A few of the examples are Jim Corbett National Park in Uttarakhand, Kaziranga National Park in Azam, Randanpur National Park in Rajasthan, Kanha National Park in Madhya Pradesh. And finally, we have the big one, the Biosphere Reserves. These are the largest and the most inclusive of all. They protect the whole ecosystem, animals, plants, rivers, and even the tribal communities who have been living in harmony with the forest for generations. India has about 18 biosphere reserves and some of them are Nilgiri biosphere reserves spread across Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Karnataka. Nanda Devi biosphere reserves in Uttarakhand and Nokrek biosphere reserves in Meghalaya. The biosphere reserves are quite interesting. The biosphere reserves have layers known as zones. It has actually three different zones. At the core zone, the nature is left completely alone. No humans allowed. It's like an exclusive area for plants and animals to thrive in peace. The buffer zone, which is outside of the core zone, allows some research, uh, education and monitoring by the scientists. Scientists and students can come here to learn and study, but they still have to be careful not to harm the environment, right? And then there is the transition zone, which is outside the buffer zone, where people live and uh, work sustainably that means fox here try their best to live in a way that doesn't hurt the nature and this design allows biodiversity culture and economy to survive and thrive together if you look at it it's a pretty intelligent design right yes it is one such biosphere reserve is the simlipal biosphere reserve in mayurbanj district in the indian state of odisha this protected area is a part of unesco world network of biosphere reserve since 2009 it is a large number of species of plants and animals and it is also a tiger reserve. That means the plants and animals here are conserved and protected. But protected areas alone aren't enough. Illegal hunting still happens. Trees are still cut and pollution still seeps into the forest streams. So conservation needs more than science and fences. It needs awareness, education and action from all of us. But the good news? When forests are protected, species come back. When rivers are cleaned, fishes return. When people care, nature recovers faster than we think. Even one tree planted, one animal protected, one plastic bag being avoided adds up to something massive. Forests are not just about trees, they are about everything that lives and everything that depends on and that includes us. Now the big question to think about is, what's the one small action that you can take today to help protect forest and wildlife? Even a single step is a step towards conservation.